A journey to Juneteenth. Tonight, we educate, celebrate, and commemorate the significance of this holiday. We're talking about our independence, um, but we never get to talk about, you know, Emancipation Day. We will learn about its origins and place in American history and how it became a federal and state holiday. From the food to the flags, it all encompasses a rich heritage steeped in culture, a celebration for all Americans, and a journey to freedom. Tonight on Eyewitnesses at 7, a special presentation celebrating Juneteenth in Connecticut. From Channel 3, this is an Eyewitness News special presentation. Juneteenth in Connecticut. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special Eyewitness News presentation. We're so glad you're here. I'm Wendell Edwards. I'm Brian Reed. And I'm Umqua Sonia. Folks have celebrated Juneteenth here in Connecticut for decades, but this is the first year that it's officially recognized on the state calendar. The General Assembly passed a bill last October designating June 19th as an official state holiday. And Governor Let Lamont signed that bill into law. Lamont saying, quote, today we commemorate the day in 1865 when federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas to take control of the state and ensure that all enslaved people be freed. Now we're going to dig into that history in just a couple of minutes, but now let's look at how the holiday is being celebrated across the state. And we'll start in New Britain, where about two hours ago, the city raised a Juneteenth flag to kick off its second annual Freedom Fest in Central Park. Music, food, and local nonprofits were on site sharing what they do. It's still going on now, and it runs till 8 o'clock. And now to Waterbury, where a flag-raising ceremony was held this morning by the Greater Waterbury NAACP. Secretary of State Stephanie Thomas attended to talk about the significance of the day as well as the importance of voting. Now over to Middletown, there was a parade down Main Street this morning, followed by a celebration in Nearbury Park. You had everything you could ask for, food, music, and dancing as well. Here's some sound from there. I feel like really proud to be African American and to have my culture celebrated here. And it's just a really big win for Middletown. And I'm really proud to be a resident here. It was all a part of the city's third annual Juneteenth Liberation Day Festival. Juneteenth events have actually been happening throughout the month. We now go town by town to show you some of the ones that happens over the weekend. We started in Hartford, the capital city. There's a Juneteenth gala at the Wadsworth uh, Athenaeum. The Hartford Soul event was hosted by the Amistad Center for Art and Culture at the Athenaeum. Taking place for the past 32 years, this is the longest running Juneteenth event in the greater Hartford area. And in New Haven on Saturday, a pick from the Connecticut 29 Des Descendants Juneteenth Parade. The group says even after moving the event indoors due to weather, hundreds still showed out. And Simsbury also had a Juneteenth celebration on Saturday. It took place at Simsbury High School. One of the highlights was the longest table where guests joined community members to foster connections, ideas, and relationships. Up in Bloomfield, crowds lined the streets for the town's Juneteenth parade. And the event also brought native son and former NFL player Dwight Freeney back home. And finally to East Hartford, where there was a celebration Saturday at the Community Cultural Center. It featured a variety of vendors, food trucks, entertainment, and of course, so much more. And as we continue this Juneteenth special, it's important to remember what we are celebrating and commemorating. It is the day slaves in Texas learned they were free, and it is now a national and state holiday. And here's a look at Juneteenth's origin and why it should be celebrated by all. Juneteenth is a holiday now recognized nationally and locally, but we all know that wasn't always the case. This is a part of history. This is what we have, our ancestors have experienced and our ancestors have suffered through and fought for, and we should absolutely be wanting to honor this history. History shows us what led up to Juneteenth. The Emancipation Proclamation signed by President Abraham Lincoln in 1863 brought an end to slavery, but not really. Even though the South lost, it took two years for the Civil War to officially end. And not everyone was immediately free. Monique Melton is an author and expert on Black American history. A lot of our history, a lot of Black history, which is American history, is being erased, is being watered down. And so these really important lessons are not being taught unless we're doing it at home. Freedom finally did come on June 19th, 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. Some 2,000 Union troops arrived on Galveston Island, Texas, informing the 250,000 enslaved people there they were indeed free by executive decree. 
this day came known as Juneteenth. But for decades, it was only celebrated in Texas. It didn't become a federal holiday until 2021 when President Biden signed it into law. So should people know the history? And why is Juneteenth worth celebrating? People should know about it because it is their history. That's point right here. Um, no matter what color. No matter what color you are, where you're from, you should know about it because it's a part of your history. It's a part of the journey of this country. Right now, more than half of the U.S. and Washington, D.C. recognize Juneteenth as a legal holiday through legislative action. Connecticut made it a state holiday in 2022, a holiday that continues to celebrate a part of the American culture. When people feel seen, heard, acknowledged, and loved, they build a better community. And when people can see, hear, acknowledge, and love, they build a better community. So did you know there are actually two different flags that have been flown through Juneteenth? Perhaps you've seen them already. We're going to explain why and get to the significance of the colors coming up. And I'm sharing the story of freed slaves who ended up serving in the military in Connecticut. He has an interesting connection to that day when the slaves in Texas learned they were free. We'll be right back.